Does every person need the gospel preached to them before Jesus returns? Can we speed up his return? Let's think about it. Hey, my name's Justin Harrell. I challenge you to challenge yourself to think about less taught biblical topics. Are you 100% sure about your views on end times? Why are we so confident we know exactly how the end times will play out? If you are, you probably need to reconsider your confidence. Predicting the future is hard. You're simply extrapolating based on current trends. Look at the meteorologists. Ah, it looks like it's gonna be a washout tomorrow. If you have plans tomorrow, you'll need your umbrella. It looks like Hurricane Harry is going to make landfall today or tomorrow, maybe, possibly, if current trends hold based on our models. We're tracking its trajectory along these possible paths. It looks like we have a really nice holiday weekend coming up. I want to focus on Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in all the world as a witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. This is a popular verse used to guilt people into becoming missionaries. If you want Jesus to return, you need to get out there and share the gospel. I get tired of all these marketing tactics used at youth conventions and youth camps to push people into professional ministry, when there are thousands of other ways to share the gospel with the unique gifts God has granted you. If you're in the pre-trib camp, this verse is used to prevent the rapture of the church. It can't happen until everyone hears, so hurry up and get out there and share the gospel. Is this really what Jesus is saying? In context and based on his audience, Jesus is talking about the end of the age. This is when he returns to earth. Now if you're a post-tribber, then the rapture and the second coming are one and the same. But if you're a pre-tribber, Jesus is not referring to the rapture here. A pre-trib view says Jesus pulls his church out of the world before the judgments in Revelation are poured out. A post-trib view says Jesus pulls his church out of the world after the judgments are poured out. If you are new to this controversy, now you have something more to think about. What this verse does not say. It does not say the gospel needs to be preached to every person before the tribulation starts. It also doesn't say the gospel needs to be preached to every person before the rapture. It simply says it will be preached in all the world. That doesn't mean every person in the world gets a one-on-one -on -one with a missionary. Think about the population of the world. People are being born constantly and then coming to the age where they understand sin and their need for a solution to that problem. Will we be able to catch up with that growth? definitely not putting a damper on the church's commission to share the gospel. Matthew 28, 18 to 20, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. Jesus commands us to make disciples. But did he tell us to hurry up so he can come back? Some believe it's implied. I don't, simply because he isn't referring to us being taken out of this world, but his return to rule and reign over this world. Also, God will take advantage of an angel to share the gospel. Revelation 14, 6, Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people. If man had already accomplished reaching every person on the planet, what's the angel for? But Peter says we can hasten the day of the Lord. Yeah, I figured you'd bring that up. 2 Peter 3.12 Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God. When you look up the word hastening in the original language, it has two meanings. To hurry and to desire earnestly. I would argue that the second meaning makes more sense here. And I'm not alone. Various English translations of 2 Peter opt for this viewpoint. Also, how can you speed up the day? Is it set or not? Does God already not know the dates he has set? I've heard other statements made that sound silly surrounding the phrase, the fullness of the Gentiles. These statements go something like this. His return is not about a date. 
It's about a number. When the full number of believers get saved, he will return. You could be that last person. Hurry up, you're holding the rest of us up. We need to stop saying silly things like that. If God is all-knowing, then he knows the date that last person will get saved. So even if you want to say it's based on a number, there's still a date connected to that. God has appointed dates and times that are immutable. We saw it with his first coming. Would his second coming be any different? Just before Jesus ascended into heaven, his disciples had a burning question. Acts 1, 6 and 7. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. It seems like God has appointed times and seasons. Also, people will repent when he returns, specifically the remnant of Israel, when they see the one that died on that cross thousands of years ago. The fullness of the Gentiles is spoken about in Romans 11, 25 to 27. For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, The Deliverer will come out of Zion, and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them, when I take away their sins. There are various views on what this fullness is referring to. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to think about. But the context of Romans chapter 11 is about God not being done with the nation of Israel. For now, they're set aside while God focuses on building his church. The goal of the church is to provoke Israel to jealousy. Hey, they seem to know God better than we do. I thought we were the chosen ones. But the last seven years are for the Jewish people and for their holy city, Jerusalem. National Israel will turn back to God by recognizing their Messiah when he returns. In the meantime, be patient. Fulfill your commission. 2 Peter 3, 8 and 9. But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises, some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. The end of the age will come right on time. Just rejoice that you have more time to grow and share the gospel with a dark and lost world. It's something worth thinking about.